Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in Guam. We're at the Latte Stones, and today we'll speak from this position about the beginning of Guam's history and the Chamorros up until the Second Battle of Guam. Guam's history begins thousands of years ago with the arrival of the first Chamorros, who came from Southeast Asia. They are similar in speech and culture to a mix of Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. They were of three classes, the Matao, the upper, the Echiot, the middle, and the Manachang, the lower. The Matao lived in the coastal villages, and the Manachang lived inland. Echiot were the go-betweens. They had shamans and herb doctors whose practices would conflict with the Spanish later. They had fast sailing boats. They had latte stones, similar to the eastern island heads. They may have been used originally for chiefs' houses or canoe sheds. Magellan first came here on March 6, 1521. Magellan had started with a fleet of five ships from Spain but already lost two, one from sinking and the other from mutiny. He landed at the village of Umatak, but maybe two more. Half his crews were already gone. The Spanish wanted to go ashore and rest in Guam, but Chamorros had a different idea of ownership with shared property. They came to the ships and started stealing everything they could find. They were also okay with trading though. The Spanish, when they left, called the place the Island of Thieves. After a few shots from the Trinidad's guns, the main ship, the natives were frightened from the ships back to the jungle. Eventually, Magellan was able to trade iron items for food and water. Iron was of great value to their ancient Chamorros. Only 18 men survived the Magellanic voyage and on only one ship, the Victoria. It was commanded by Elcano. Magellan would die in the Philippines and lose two more ships there. The Spanish returned in 1565 with De La Gaspe, but he was going to the Philippines. On June 15, 1668, the Galeon San Diego arrived with the Jesuit missionaries. They introduced trade, corn, cattle, hide tanning, and of course, Christianity. In Hagatna, where we are now, a basilica was constructed in 1669. A few years later, a war started over a bit of cultural confusion. The priests started baptizing babies when they were very sick and going to die, so that they could go to heaven. The Chamorros didn't understand this, thought that the priests were killing the babies. When the chief's baby girl seemed to die after one of these baptisms, the priest and his assistant were murdered. The Spanish military then came to capture the guilty. A number of battles happened, ending with the chief's death at the final battle on the island of Rota in 1680. Like the Americas, disease came with the Spanish. An island, pop, uh, island population shrank from 12,000 to 5,000 by 1741. Everyone was Catholic and mixed with Spanish and Filipinos. They lived in five villages. The Galleon trade era ended in 1815 with Mexican independence. Other Europeans started arriving from Russia, France, and England. On June 21st, 1898, the United States captured Guam in a bloodless landing during the Spanish-American War. The Treaty of Paris, ending that war, ceded Guam to the U.S. along with the Philippines. It became a coaling station for ships. In 1899, Saipan, the largest of the Mariana Islands, was sold to Germany, but they didn't do anything to it. In 1914, Japan captured Saipan and the other, other islands other than Guam. Saipan was officially ceded to Japan in 1918.
The first shots of the American military in World War I happened at Guam. With the last German warship in the Pacific, the SMS Cormoran, being scuttled to avoid capture by the USS Supply. Shortly after the war, the Chamorros were evicted from all Japanese-controlled land islands and were sent to Guam. Saipan and Tinian were then settled by the Japanese for the next two decades. In 1911, the population of Guam was back to around 12,000. A Navy station was built there and plans were made for civilian government around 1950. On December 8, 1941, Guam was invaded by Japan. The Americans had only one minesweeper and two patrol boats, along with about 145 Marines and some Navy people, totaling 271 troops. There was a unit of Guam reserves, and together they totaled around 500 men. They had no heavy weapons. Four hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese attack started on Guam repeated airstrikes for over a day from Saipan. Then four Japanese heavy cruisers and a number of other ships started shelling the island's installations. The garrison was told not to resist, but the Marines did anyway. When the large Japanese force landed, the Marines were overwhelmed with 13 dead and 37 wounded. Six American Navy radio men escaped capture and were hidden by the Chamorros who were very loyal to America. Eventually, only one was left, George Ray Tweed. You can see his story in the 1962 movie, No Man is an Island. Many Chamorros were very badly mistreated, tortured, and murdered by the Japanese for hiding them. This ends the first part of the speech.